In the classic movie Frankenstein, Dr. Victor Frankenstein makes a new person from parts of deceased people. He sends his assistant Fritz to the University Museum to steal a normal brain in a jar. Fritz accidentally brings back the brain of a criminal. That makes the Frankenstein monster bad. The assumption in this movie is that you are your brain. We could call this the Frankenstein hypothesis. This hypothesis seems to be the assumption underlying many physicalist theories. The identity theory, functionalism, and connectionism are brain-centric theories. Brain-centric theories ignore the role that the body and the environment play when it comes to determining mental states. According to some philosophers, we must see that the mind is embodied and embedded, in other words, we are not brains in vats. We can show that we are not just brains and vats by giving examples in which cognition or experiences are embodied and embedded. When we say that cognitive states, such as the concepts we have, are embodied, we mean that the cognitive states of an organism are determined or at least strongly influenced by the type of body that the organism has. Imagine that an organism is perfectly spherical and has eyes on all sides. Would it then have concepts, such as front and back? This is not very likely, because the organism has no front and no back. So, here you can clearly see that concepts are embodied. That cognitive states are embedded means that the cognitive states of an organism are determined or at least strongly influenced by the type of the environment the organism lives in. If people want to build a very large building, then they need all kinds of building plans to be able to think ahead about how they're going to tackle that. Termites build termite mounds with no building plans, which is comparable to humans trying to build a gigantic flat without any blueprints. The prevailing idea is that the environment actually indicates what they should do. Thus, as a result and without further thought, the termite mound gets built. Termites create those mounds out of mud balls made with their own saliva. There are certain kind of chemicals in that saliva. If a termite leaves one of those mud balls somewhere, then part of the environment will contain those chemicals as a result. If other termites came across those chemicals and had a mud ball with them, they would place it on top of the other mud ball. In this way, columns and arches are created, which form the basic structure of a termite mound. They do not have to make an entire building plan in advance, to be able to build the mound, as long as they have an environment containing the right signals. Not only is cognition embodied and embedded, experiences are as well. That experiences, such as the experiences of blue and green, are embodied means that the experiences of an organism are determined or at least strongly influenced by the type of body that organism has. A bit of a tongue-in-cheek example is the following. In the United States, serial killer Arthur Shawcross was convicted in 1990. Everything was wrong with this man. One of the things wrong with him was that he had an elevated level of cryptopyrrole, a chemical that is released by the liver during the breakdown of red blood cells. That chemical has the same effect as LSD, which causes strong visual hallucinations in most people who use it. It is unclear whether this caused Chakra's terrible behavior. What matters now is the Frankenstein hypothesis. What if the Frankenstein monster had gotten a normal brain, but a liver like the one of Shawcross? Wouldn't that have been an equally decisive factor for his behavior? Clearly, other parts of the body, besides the brain, can determine what people experience. That experiences are embedded means that the experiences of an organism are determined or at least strongly influenced by the type of environment the organism lives in. There is an example that shows that this concerns colors and color experiences. As the philosopher John Locke claimed, colors are secondary qualities. Qualities that we attribute to things, but that the things do not have independently of us. Color experiences, of course, exist. Those color experiences depend on the environment in which one is situated. If we take a square that we experience as orange, and we move that square into a different environment, then of course that square itself does not change. But if the environment has other properties than the environment where the square came from, you can experience it as a different color, such as brown. This demonstrates that the environment partly determines the experience. From a Darwinian perspective, the idea that mental states are embodied and embedded is not at all innovative, because anyone who thinks from an evolutionary standpoint knows that organisms have evolved as a whole and are adapted to their natural environment. Naturally, all proponents of the various physicalist theories 
know that the mind being embodied and embedded is in fact only an elaboration of what all physicalists have believed all along. It is therefore not a criticism that refutes one or more of these theories, it is an extension of physicalism in general.